you asked and you shall receive. What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dollar Mike and I'm back at it again with another video, another dividend video in particular because we're going to be talking about some more dividend key factors. You guys liked that video a lot last week. You guys commented to let me know to make another one, Mike. So here I am making another one. Either way, in today's video, we're going to talk about some more dividend key factors. I got about six or seven on the list today. A little bit more in depth, not too crazy, but if you're just a beginner dividend investor or if you want to start to become a beginner dividend investor, then this is probably one of those videos for you. Make sure you check that previous video out and also check out some of my other dividend content because I've made tons of it and I've also shown you how to create your own dividend portfolio. Also, make sure you let me know how many times I've said dividend in today's video. It's probably going to be quite a lot like it was last week and I got some comments for that as well. So, like I said, I appreciate you guys commenting and everything like that. Let's get right into the video. I'm not going to waste any more any more of your time. Let's go. As I mentioned before, this is more of a continuation of last week's video. So, like I said, go and check that out if you have not seen it. And on top of that, these uh, tips, these dividend tips or these dividend key factors are in no particular order of importance, but regardless, you should know about them if you want to become this type of investor if you're interested in it. So let's start with the first one. I talked about it previously in the last video, but we're going to dive a little bit deeper into it. And it has to do with taxes and it also has to do with how you get taxed when you get dividends when dividends are paid to you. So the first one I wanna mention is ordinary dividends versus qualified dividends. Now likely, if you're using a regular brokerage account, a regular taxable brokerage account, then all your dividends will be taxed for the most part. Ordinary dividends are taxed as ordinary income. So whatever your actual regular tax rate or regular income rate is for getting tax on your money, that's what your ordinary dividends will be taxed as. Now qualified dividends are a little bit different. They have a little bit more parameters parameters and requirements to be a qualified dividend. It's not anything hard, but they will be actually taxed at a lower rate. But we can go over those qualities or those requirements that you need to actually get taxed at a lower rate when it comes to a qualified dividend. So ordinary, just ordinary income, qualified, a little bit better, and you're going to get taxed at a lower rate, which is definitely what you want. If you buy a dividend stock and you hold it for at least 61 days after the X dividend date, then it will be taxed as a qualified dividend versus a ordinary dividend. A qualified dividend, you'll be at a lower tax rate, which is overall better for you when it comes to getting that passive income. And the maximum tax rate for a qualified dividend is 20% versus a ordinary dividend, which is like I said before, on ordinary income, so it will be taxed higher. So again, to qualify for a qualified dividend, you have to buy the stock on or before the X dividend date and hold it for a minimum of 61 days to receive that qualified dividend tax rate. Otherwise, it'll be taxed as an ordinary dividend, which is your ordinary tax rate. For tip number two, we also briefly talked about DRIP or dividend reinvestment plan in that previous video. Make sure you check that out if you haven't seen it. I didn't show you guys actually any dividend reinvestment examples, but to give you guys a gist, I did explain that when you have a dividend, you get paid that dividend, it goes back into the underlying asset if you do want to turn drip on it'll go back into that underlying asset so the next time you get paid out a dividend you're going to make more than the last time you got paid out a dividend and it's just going to continuously snowball to make yourself more money in the future or you know like i said before as well you could have all those dividends simply come to you every single time you get paid out a dividend and that could just go to your bank account it can go to another stock or do whatever you want to do with whatever it's your money you can do whatever you want but i just wanted to provide a quick example of what exactly drip can really do for you in the long term and show you guys exactly what i mean by showing you guys pretty much how my drip works and how my portfolio will function over now to the future i guess you could say either way i have this right here i have this app right here which we'll talk about in a second and this app pretty much has all my dividends and everything in there. It tracks everything, so we're all good to go. And you can see right now, if you look at my annual income for my dividends, it's sitting at roughly $1,400. So that's how much passive income I'm receiving personally from just my Robinhood portfolio that I have on average every single year. That's how much I'm receiving for holding the stocks that I have. You can see right now, or you can see also if you look right below it, the annual income in 2032. This is an estimated annual income based on how much I invest every single month, and also based on what the companies are paying out right now and what they're estimated to pay out in the future if they have a steady dividend growth rate. Either way, if we look at that, it says it's about $3,892. So pretty much, if I do absolutely nothing with my portfolio right now, absolutely nothing, but I don't change anything, then this is pretty much uh, on an estimate of how much I will receive 
after simply 10 years, after simply waiting about 10 years and that's how much annual income I would make. But like I said, we can change these numbers around and do whatever we wanna do. If we scroll down, you can see the projected balance. So right now my portfolio is around, I think 30, 43,000. If I really touch, don't touch my portfolio at all, don't add any more money or anything like that, then in about 10 years, it should be sitting around $80,000, assuming everything is pretty regular with the market and everything just moves up on an average basis. We can go ahead and change the projected balance though. We can change that from 10 years to 25 years and see how the whole portfolio would shape up. So if I don't change anything, if I do the exact same parameters, 25 years, it looks like I'll have an annual income of about $26,000 every single year in just dividends. Now I'm not talking about stock growth or anything like that. We're talking about just dividends after 25 years based on what the numbers are based on right now. This is based on a price appreciation of 3% which is pretty much how much the stock is going to go up by a dividend growth rate of about 7%, no annual contributions at all. Meaning I never put any money in from right now for the next 25 years. We're estimated to still have a, a portfolio value of $310,000. And I'll let you, let me let you guys know that I pretty much put in $250 or I think, 200 $250 every single week into my portfolio. And this is on an estimated basis of me not putting any more money in from now for the next 25 years. And also a maximum dividend yield of 10%, meaning that's the highest the dividend yield will be across any stock. So we update that chart, that's what we're gonna be, and it should be just like that. So let's say I was putting in, I don't know, right now I'm putting in uh, 200 a week, but I'm putting in $5,000 every single year, which is pretty average for me. I think I can do that. I max out my Roth IRA. So let's go ahead and hit the update chart. Scroll down, you can see the annual income is gonna be about $58,000 and in the year of 2047, which is 25 years away about. And then of course, all that'll be divided up across each month based on just that alone. And we scroll down, we'll see the ending balance of 711 thousand dollars and we scroll down some more we can see how I, how I broke everything down and pretty much how much money i would make from year to year and how the dividends would increase and this is only passive income this number right here is just passive income it's not based off anything else so just a quick example that's my current dividend yield that's pretty much the uh, five-year dividend growth rate everything like that so just a quick example of how things could work out for me it literally if i put no money in versus me putting more money into it so you can see how dividends can snowball and compound on top of each other and i just wanted to bring that example to you guys quickly now, as you just seen i just showed you how i go ahead and track my dividends and how i can go ahead and project possible dividend growth and also you know mix up the numbers and see what could possibly happen in the future for me and also just have everything in one solid place and that's tip number three pretty much just tracking your dividends you need a solid place to track your dividends I recommend two different places if you want to choose either one. Both of them are free to an extent. I have the paid version of uh, both of them as well. But for you, if you're just one person just tracking one portfolio then and you don't have too many stocks, then you probably will be okay with just the free version, which is great. And that is trackyourdividends.com and also the Stock Events app. Both of these are great apps or a great website. Trackyourdividends.com is a website. The Stock Events app is an actual app. And I think it's also a website. But the point is, you can track your dividends on both. They'll keep track of your portfolio, you know, how much dividends you're gonna get on a monthly basis, maybe a daily basis, yearly, all that kind of good stuff. Track your dividends as far as the website goes. Also offers you the option to do dividend screeners, which we haven't talked about either. Pretty much a screener just allows you to set certain parameters so you can find particular stocks that you may like to go ahead and to, to go ahead to invest into. So it's a lot of different options out there for you. Track Your Dividends also shows you how to go ahead and learn more about dividend investing, which is exactly what I'm doing by creating this video for you as well. So just a place to track your dividends is very important. And like I said, trackyourdividends.com, I've had no issues with them since I've been using it for about two, three years now. One of the best, uh, I guess, uh, memberships that I have, I think it's like $60 a year, but well worth it for what I have. I'm tracking multiple portfolios. It keeps track of all of it, passive income. I know exactly what I need to do and that's cool with me. Like I said, stock events also free. They're both free, but they also have paid tiers that offer you more features. And you can just sign up and check it out and see if that's if that's an interest for you. I don't have any referral links for them, but I will include the links to the website and the app down below. I don't get paid for any of that down below in the comment section, at least for those two links. So nothing, no kickback for me, but 
all information for you. So let's move on to the fourth tip. Tip number four is pretty quick and is really just talking about how a healthy dividend could possibly be good for a stock. It's just something to note when you're looking at a, a company to particularly invest into. If they have a healthy growing dividend, it might be a sign that it's a pretty okay company. And that's not the only thing you should look at when it comes to investing into a particular stock, but it is an option for you and it is something to take note of if they do pay a dividend and also how the dividend is being paid out how um you know is it actually growing over time is it going up and down is it fluctuating is it going down over time you know things to look at in particular but if you see a stock that's not paying a crazy high dividend but you know they've been consistently paying the dividend for years and you know consistently increasing that dividend for years as well like we talked about in the previous video with dividend aristocrats and also dividend kings then it's something to take note of and it's probably a decent company to invest into and you shouldn't base all your research off of one particular metric but it is nice to take note of to find out if that's right for you it's really difficult for companies to actually fake or fluff their financials when it comes to paying out a dividend it's not something you can easily lie about on a financial report or try to deceive people like companies do with other things on a financial report next up for tip number five let's talk about the pe ratio you may have noticed this on your stock trading apps or platforms or whatever it's a pe ratio what does that mean that means the price to earnings ratio now what does that mean this pe ratio or number is basically telling you if a stock is selling at a premium price or if it's selling at a discount if a stock is selling at a premium price that's pretty much saying that uh, people might think the stock is overvalued and you should stay away from it until the price drops or if it's selling at a discount people might think that the stock is really cheap and it's a great buy right now with a lower pe ratio people may also look at a stock and be like like there's limited growth aka they don't think it's really going to grow that much in the future or in the long term or with a higher pe ratio people may think okay like a tesla or an apple they may have a higher pe ratio and people may think well with those companies we expect a lot of growth going forward in the future so we're going to give it a higher pe ratio versus a lower one for a stock maybe like coke you know the company's not really doing too much in the sense of like innovating they they're, it's just drinks you know they don't do too much versus an apple or a tesla or a microsoft so when you see a pe ratio you can look at it and be like okay anywhere between 12 and 18 i would say it's pretty average anything above 20 19 20 or just higher i would say is generally high and then anything below 12 of course is low when it comes to a pe ratio but this is not an exact science like i mentioned before it depends on what you're actually investing into it depends on the actual company because if you look at a company like apple microsoft and tesla they are typically well they're all tech companies number one and if you're trying to compare that to maybe a real estate investment trust or a coke or a pepsi those or walmart you know they're not really all competing for the same thing they're not in direct competition with one another tech companies and drink brands and walmart they're not all in, in competition with one another so to one person this may be a high pe ratio like tesla having i think a 50 pe ratio right now versus walmart might have a 20 or a 30 which is still high for walmart possibly but it depends on what industries you're looking at so if you're going to compare pe ratios you need to make sure you're also comparing them in the same industry when it comes to investing into a stock so the point is a pe ratio is yet another metric that you can use when it comes to valuing a stock or a company to overall decide if you wish to invest into it when it comes to a dividend stock or not you know completely up to you it's not the end all be all metric you have to use a multitude of metrics to figure out if this is the right investment for you but it's something to take note of if a company may have a lower or higher pe ratio compared to another one in the same industry that you wish to invest into so completely up to you do your research and find out the last thing i want to mention today for you guys is the dgr or the dividend growth rate now we've talked about dividends growing over time you know we want a dividend that grows over time we also want a company that's, that's going to pay us a dividend out every single month or every single quarter consistently throughout years if we're going to be a dividend investor in that particular company but a dividend growth rate is definitely something to take note of if you see a company that is in consistently increasing the dividend but maybe only by one maybe two percent over a multi-year basis then of course it's great because the dividend is going up but could you simply put your money somewhere else possibly in a company that's going to continuously grow their dividend on a seven to eight percent increase every single year versus a one to two percent increase every single year that's going to make you a lot more money in the long term versus that smaller company or the company that just pays a lower dividend growth rate now you can find out the dividend growth rate and all the other metrics that i mentioned in today's video in the previous video and then all other dividend type of investments 
things that you need to know on the Seeking Alpha platform. Like I said, this is a channel partner. So if you use my link down below, you're going to get a nice little discount. I believe it's about, I want to say it's like $130 off. So right now with Seeking Alpha Premium, I believe it's $100 every single year. Personally for me, I have the premium version. It's well worth it. Like I said, I am a channel partner. So if you guys do use my link down below, I will get a small kickback, which will of course go help out the channel a lot. But by all means, you don't have to sign up, but I definitely thought I'd mention it here. If you do plan on being a dividend investor for a long term, I think it's a solid bet. You can also sign up down below with a free trial for it. So you don't even have to pay the money if you don't wish to. It's completely up to you. Like I said, it doesn't get much better than that. Try Seeking Alpha out for a couple of days. See if it actually works for you. If you like what they show you in the articles they provide, they provide way more than just dividend stuff. So you're good to go there. But typically, like I said, if you're looking at a dividend growth rate, the higher the better. Comes down to that. Of course, if they're paying a dividend growth rate of 10 to 15% every single year or over, you know, over the last 5, 10, 15 years, then you're definitely good to go versus a company that's going to pay you less. It's also a nice sign of long-term growth and profitability for the company that you're invested into. So it's pretty much a win-win. Like I said, all these metrics put together is going to find you the dividend companies that you're looking for. Not one alone is just an end-all be-all discussion on you're going to buy this stock and that's basically it. So Use all this information put together across both of these videos and also check out my other dividend videos where I talk about some of my favorite dividend stocks. And on top of that, look at my monthly portfolio update videos where I go over every single one of my every single one of my stocks in my portfolio and my monthly dividend videos where I show you guys how much money I get paid every single month from the dividend stocks that I'm invested into on my Robinhood portfolio. It's all right here. It's all on Dollar Mike. You can't miss it. I do it every single month, literally. It's been, what, three years now? So yeah. I got you guys covered and that's pretty much it when it comes to some more key factors for those dividend investors for the beginners of course if you learn something new let me know down in the comment section below hit a like on this video it definitely helps out the channel gets the video pushed out to more people it's probably one of the best things you can do and check out seeking alpha if you wish to like i said if you don't want to sign up and pay of course there's a free trial link will be down below as well and on top of that if you do want to sign up and pay then I think you get a mean discount. I believe the regular price is about $240 and you're getting it for literally $100. Would love it and that's it. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Stay positive. Stay hydrated. Dollar Mike. Peace.